Welcome to Sculpture Studios, a fantastic project here for all of the golf fans out there that might just recognise this particular trophy. We've been contacted to create a significantly larger than life version of the Ryder Cup for the 2023 tournament taking place in Rome. Now, we were told of a similar project that took place out in the US, whereby a giant polystyrene or styrofoam version of the trophy was created. This is essentially what our client would like also, but we're going to be creating this from glass fibre for more longevity. Not only is this going outside and we're building this to last, but we'd like to think that we could possibly top this US version, so let's see how we get on shall we? Nothing like a bit of friendly competition. We've been sent a version of the trophy to the studio for us to take some proper reference shots. Yes, I suppose this could be 3D CNC cut, but that's simply not really the way we like to do things here. Come on, you know it's better than that by now. All of the elements are going to be created by hand, sculpted, turned on a lathe or an actual turntable, moulds created and glass fibre casts, everything assembled and cleaned up with metalwork inside, and you guys are coming along for the ride. After a meticulous look at the trophy and scaling this up with a ridiculous amount of measurements, we're ready to start blocking this out. The only element that we're looking to have 3D printed is the little golfer standing at the very top. I mean, I don't think this version is supposed to represent Samuel Ryder, who originally donated the trophy and who the tournament was named after, as he had a rather impressive bushy moustache. But we wanted to make sure that we were creating exactly what the client was looking for, so this little golfer is going to be printed, stood on the top and then finished in the same gold. For now we're going to be cracking on with all of the other elements, so here we are with Aiden ready to tee off and get into full swing. There's always something therapeutic about turning something like this. We're creating a three-tiered base, by which when Aiden's happy with the overall form, he's going over with a smooth, water-based plaster mix and sanding everything down once dry. Aside from the little golfer, all of the elements you see in this project video will have a mould made, by which we can then produce a hollow fiberglass cast. It's best to clean up all of the master patterns as much as possible during these softer polystyrene stages, and this saves on any unnecessary harder work at cleaning up the fiberglass later on. Aiden uses a variety of hand tools like nail and wire brushes, saws, rifflers and sandpapers to first rough out the form and then work it down to a smoother finish before the plaster. Though hand creating all of these elements does take some time, if this were to be 3D CNC cut, you'd still need to have a suitably accurate 3D file created of the trophy form. This would then be cut accurately, but it by no means ensures that it's going to arrive at our studio in perfect condition. This will still need to be sanded down to remove any join or router lines before it's then ready for moulding. The way in which we choose to create, which we like to think means something to have that handcrafted touch, we try to get as accurate to the naked eye as the machines can do, and hopefully get it done in a quicker time. We don't need to be programmed in, just give Aiden some tools and a drawing and he's off. For many of these elements, where there's only going to be one cast created, we're using a slip clay to finish the polystyrene and going over with plaster of Paris to create a waste plaster mould. The slip clay helps to both seal the polystyrene as well as allow the plaster to release from the pattern afterwards. moment it's tricky to work out at a glance which element is which and what will go where on the finished trophy. But don't you worry, you'll see everything coming together later once the casts have been made. With the master pattern of this bowl piece being removed from the plaster mould, Aiden's now going in with a metal busk or kidney scraper 
to smoothen out the interior before the plaster has fully dried and fully hardens. Cleaning up the interior of the mould like this, while still using softer materials, is just another step to help eliminate harder cleaning up later, and every little helps. For some of the more intricate work, clay detailing is being modelled before the mould is taken. There are numerous areas around the trophy where either clay or a plasticine sculpt is required to achieve the level of detail that we're after. When it comes to editing and putting together a project video like this, I specifically choose music tracks that I feel fits the mood or the style of the piece that we're creating. In instances like this though, Aiden just loves a bit of reggae. Don't look, don't fall for it, don't do it, don't... <sighs> you looked. Though these clips are flicking back and forth between various elements that are all being created simultaneously, this is just to show how much work, how many processes and simply how many pieces it takes to make something as intricate as this trophy. The underside of the main cup section has smooth, rounded, almost scallops taken out, and similar but less exaggerated detailing on the top of the cup. The main stem is a multifaceted octagon shape with four lion heads adorning the top of the collar. The lion, eagle and flag logo is a 3D sculpted element on the front of the cup. The foot of the trophy has an almost leaf detailing going all the way around and the handles on the top section are an elaborate, almost floral decoration. Each of these areas we're trying to pay particular attention to to essentially go above and beyond what our client is expecting. If they have the polystyrene US version in mind, we want to give them something a grade higher. With the majority of the larger elements now cast, it's time to begin the assembly. All these little supports are there just to help it while we lift it up on the trestle so we can get underneath and laminate everything in. I think I'll actually drill a hole in here as well somewhere and pump some squirty foam. That will lock that bar in as well, save it even bending. But it'll be good. Now let's go down and see Jess. Oh, Jessica.
for the handles at the top of the trophy, we're creating a silicon rubber mould with a plaster jacket, just to ensure that the mould achieves all of the detail that Aiden has modelled in the plasticine. To ensure this has an internal fixing to the main trophy cup section, a steel rod has been manipulated into shape which will be laminated inside each handle. We're creating a square topped wooden base for the sculpture, which we believe will be raised up even higher on a plinth when it gets to Rome. This is just so it's more of an overhead photo opportunity rather than something to climb on. We're currently having a transportation crate made so that this can travel safely, potentially laid down during transit. For the circular, three-tiered base section here, Aiden's going to embellish this a little with a bit of airbrush work to create a mahogany grain paint effect finish. The original model, like many metallic trophies, is finished in a chrome, or in this case a chrome gold. Our sculpture isn't actually going to be this blingy chrome gold effect, but instead the client has opted for a less flashy matter gold spray that'll be easier to clean up and repair should the sculpture ever get damaged. Extra detailing like this wood grain here will simply be a nice finishing touch to accompany this. We're getting down to the final stages of the project here for what you might call the pretty stuff. Now that all of the fabrication, the assembly, the metalwork and the cleaning up has taken place, the entire surface of the sculpture is given a primer layer of a grey 2K car body paint and is then top coated in the chosen gold. The gold for figure for the top of the trophy has been 3D printed and here he is now delivered to the studio. Hey, looking good, I like him. I'm going to be replacing the plastic golf club with a steel rod just to ensure that this doesn't get broken further down the line and that he's going to be fixed on top of the trophy and finished in the same gold as the rest of the sculpture. The next piece of footage is just a short clip that we put together for our client to show him an update on the progress so far. Hi there Bert, happy Friday. We thought we'd just send you a, a little video update. As you can see, it's just hovering off the floor there about a centimetre or so, or not even that, about five mil with little rubber feet here on top of the circle. This here, Bert, is the, the base of the trophy itself and it comes out to here and that's 10 inches between where it hits it on the minimum point all round. This base is made out of plywood and it's been um, primed together with an oil-based primer uh, and it's nice and flat so that's good. And the metal work goes through here with the bolts and gets fixed on underneath so the whole trophy and the base is connected together when it goes in the case so it should be nice and uh, strong to handle oh should we uh should we give them a little sneak peek of the uh the yeah. base have a look at this but i think you'd be pleased with this this is a, a little bit above and beyond what we um what we originally signed up for but as you can see this has all been airbrushed to look like a really nice high gloss mahogany grain. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's come up nice, I think, with the grain as well. It's just a nice contrast between the whole lot. The golfer, uh, we've had him 3D printed because it was the, the, the best situation all round. Uh, he's really nice. We've, we're currently adding a little metal rod for the golf club, um, just because this was 3D printed in the plastic, but we want to make sure he's nice and strong, put some rods up through his legs. We've got the top cap to go on there, obviously, and then the, uh, the golfer to go on top as well, but we're going to fix him securely to the, to the top first before we put it all together. But yeah, there you go. That's just a little update, and we just thought we'd go uh, a little bit extra so that, um, so that basically we're beating that polystyrene version, you know what I mean?
there we go. I told you it would all come together. We're going to make sure the sculpture is nice and cosy in its packing crate, trying to ensure there's no unnecessary stress put on anything when it's laying down, and hoping that it reaches its destination in Rome safely. We've had a little hunt around online to find some finished photographs of the trophy on site for what we hope was an enjoyable event for players and supporters alike and everybody else involved. And don't worry Aiden, I'm sure you'll make it into the Riders' Cup one day. We'd like to thank our clients at CSM Live for approaching us with the project, and a special thank you to Bert and Johnny for being our main liaisons throughout the process. It would be great to hear from you guys again and see what other projects you may have in the pipeline, as this was a pleasure to create, and it's great to see this out in the public domain, being appreciated the way it's intended. We always love hearing what you guys at home think of our projects and our channel, so please feel free to drop a comment below, and by all means subscribe, and give us a follow on social media. A big thank you to all of our patrons, who support our projects and the creation of our videos, we love having you guys on board, and if you'd like to support our family run studio, you can find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated, from all of us here at Sculpture Studios, thank you very much for watching.